So, very good morning. Today, we'd like to concentrate on uh, database users. How many kinds of users are there in the databases? And uh, what are the roles and responsibilities of uh, database administrator and database designer? These two will be taken into consideration. Then followed by client server architecture. How the client server architecture will be designed in, 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 uh, uh, in, in purview of databases. So everything will be seen today. So if possible, we'll complete that particular concept today so that uh, we'd like to finish off for unit number one today, otherwise by tomorrow. So let us just get started without any further delay. So look at this, database users. So any, any large organization, any organization, whatever the organization you could consider here. Yes. So organization must be have some kind of employees. And these employees must be always divided into several, several number of departments. Okay, several number of departments here. So those departments uh, will be taken into consideration and uh, one of those departments will be very, very important and uh, some other department might be having some negligible importance. So some other department might be having so uh, pretty much important, something like that will be there here. So here in this particular perception, as far as the database is being considered, so there are many people who are involved for uh, designing the database and then uh, to main, to maintain the database and then uh, and then uh, uses uh, that particular database. Many people are uh, not exactly hundreds, thousands, lakhs of people are supposed to be used those uh, databases here. In this regard, we'd like to identify what are the roles, I mean what are different different kinds of roles which are uh, been available in a particular organization in the perception of uh, database. So as far as database is concerned, so what are different kinds of uh, different kinds of people whom were there within the within the organization that is uh, examined. So the detailed descriptions for those uh, database are uh, database uh, users are number one database administrators number two database designers number three system analysts number four application programmers or database programmers and number five end users end users might be further divided into many types casual users people who are uh, just accessing the data so native or parametric end users the people who are uh, actually use that particular database and then uh, finally sophisticated end users so i'd like to give you examples of each and every type of this uh, so end users here i'd like to give you every 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 example every whomever will be considered as uh, casual users who are native and maybe and who are sophisticated and uh, finally standalone users so these are different different kinds of users of course Category number five, this particular category cannot be uh, there within the organization. These people could not get any salary. These people could not any could not uh, recruit anywhere. So these are the people who were uh, uh, who were uh, accessing the database. These people are responsible for accessing the database. Okay, so this uh, accessing database will be done by many people. So these people are not related to organization, but uh, database administrators or database designers or database analysts or database programmers, database application programmers. First four categories are uh, so having their own, uh, so let us consider uh, job profiles with any organization, IT industry organization. So we'll concentrate on uh, database administrators and the database designers. Okay. So what about the roles and responsibilities of database designers? Same kind of responsibilities for the analysts, same kind of responsibilities for programmers also. Designers uh, responsibilities will be. So we will discuss something about uh, designers responsibilities. What about the responsibilities the designers will do? Same, same in the sense these people are giving entity relationship diagrams, whereas application programmers have been developed them. They are supposed to develop them. Analysts are uh, always analyze the database, analyze that particular database, 
and that particular database will be taken into consideration by uh, 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 by uh, database designers or database administrators. However, what about the what about the specification we have discussed here? So you have a final exam question on uh, this particular topic, that is uh, database administrators. Who are database administrators and explain the so roles and responsibilities of uh, database administration. That is the question which may be given to you in all sets, probably uh, out of four, at least to two sets, you could have that particular question. So you please concentrate on this particular question. However, let me go ahead with the uh, responsibilities. What are the responsibilities of uh, so database administrators? Look at this. So uh, our database administrators, so DBA, they will be called also, in short, they will be called DBA, database administrators. Let us take care. Database administrators will be, these people or this particular category will be always uh, creates depression or creates users and what are the roles of those users and what is the catalog tables who are the catalog tables in the sense already I have shown you in the previous uh, offline class that is a TAB select everything from TAB select everything from table something like that I have given to you I have given to you so they are called as a catalog tables and uh, database dictionary some other tables are there while speaking or while discussing something about uh, so triggers cursors and all those will come across with uh, database dictionaries also we'll discuss at that moment so these people so database administrators first responsibility is these people are supposed to create so users create the users roles and the catalog or data dictionary tables etc this will be gets created by database administrator that is the first and foremost responsibility and the second responsibility is so normally one user will be gets created that the user will be given permission to access some kind of databases or some kind of tables for example some kind of tables so they will be they will be so given to access at that moment at that moment so uh, if uh, the, 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 the size of uh, that particular data the size of that particular data will be uh, sorry the size of uh, space of uh, that particular uh, auxiliary storage will be less in the sense then uh, he will be he will be create a particular structure of that particular uh, user and he's also responsible to create such kind of uh, access methods access methods in the sense we have uh, several number of access methods are there so indexes or clusters or partitions or some other so likewise we have many access methods are there these access methods will be gets created by database administrators only Okay, these are not uh, supposed to create by you as as such. Okay, so during the explanation of uh, 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 the uh, uh, what is that uh, data manipulation language DML, and then uh, uh, we will discuss uh, what are the different different kinds of uh, so indices, how they could be gets created, so how we could create uh, a particular cluster, and what are the things uh, which could be happen. Will be discussed in DDL and the DML also. We'll discuss. Okay. Then followed by physical schema. Already we have discussed in the previous class and the previous session. So physical schema or physical level will be always accessed or always uh, taken care by only database administrator. Entire organizations uh, physical schema will be so taken care by database or uh, database administrator only. So this is the third. Uh, a responsibility and the fourth one is uh, if any other uh, authority authority in the sense uh, so uh, uh, what you call so username and passwords will be given to any user so that will be username passwords will be gets created by database administrators so that uh, you can access your uh, data by using so your username and password something like this it could be done by only database administrators so some other uh, uh, people are there database designers database analysts and database uh, systems application software people they are not supposed to create any users they are not supposed to create any so modification on the schema they are not doing any kind of operations of these 
So whatever the uh, whatever the responsibilities I am discussing about the database administrator, these are the exclusive responsibilities. These cannot be shared to anybody. Okay, this cannot be shared to any other people. And then uh, specifying integrity constraints. So integrity constraints on catalog and data dictionaries, not exactly the user tables. User tables will be taken care for the users. And uh, whatever the catalog he may be created, whatever the roles he may be created, whatever the users he may be created, on that particular user's roles or database tables or data dictionaries, he may be create some kind of uh, integrity constraints. We'll discuss what are the integrity constraints. So in the unit number one, so we'll always uh, uh, take the class uh, by taking some kind of assumptions because we could not uh, uh, that much familiar with the databases so far. So that is why you must be always in, in, in imaginary part only. Unit number two onwards, yes, we'll come into SQL so that you could understand very easily what I'm talking uh, so far. Okay. So, and then uh, action license with the users. Action li uh, acting license in the sense so if any user wants to increase their uh, uh, their space, so it, you must be communicate with the database administrator so that uh, he will perform that particular operation. He will finish up that particular operation. Otherwise, uh, he wanted to, I mean, any user wants to create uh, some cluster on his data, let's go to database administrator and put a requisition that please create a cluster on so and so, so and so, or index on so and so, so and so, partition on so and so, so and so will be given by you, a written, a written a requisition will be given by you. Written request in the sense, nay, the mail will be forwarded to that particular database, database administrator. Yes, he will perform those uh, operations on behalf of you. So that is what about licensing. And followed by allocating that's just before i told you so i spoke to you allocation or reallocating the quota of the space of a particular user so for example uh, in one particular organization some 100 users are there and uh, these users users in the sense application programmers or database analysts or designers are there so for this particular uh, 100 people so there is a server which is being maintained by the database administrator the server might be having some 20 terabytes 20 terabytes only the server size will be everybody in this uh, 20 terabytes only everybody have to access their data everyone must access their data within this particular 20 terabytes only. so he must adjust he must adjust the space of 20 terabytes among uh, these 100 people okay so this kind of work. so creating quota of data, quota of space uh, among the very number of people, it could be done by database administrator only. Okay. So if, if uh, one particular user does not use completion or complete of his uh, so uh, quota, then he will reallocate the same space. For example, so there is a user X, and he was uh, initially allocated uh, some uh, so 30 GB. As far as uh, his, uh, uh, his uh, uh, working capacity, so 30 GB is more, uh, more, more uh, space, huge space. He may be required only some 5 GB is enough for his uh, uh, working. So 5 GB is enough for, for his working. So remaining 25 GB is going to, remaining 25 GB is going to so release from this particular fellow and it could be allocated to some other person who is actually required the space? Such kind of operations will be done by uh, done by database administrator. So these are the specifications. Then finally, uh, whatever the whatever the performance analysis performance analysis which is being done by the so entire organization will take care by so called database administrator. And taking care of overall control on databases, on databases by the, the database administrator. There are, uh, we will discuss this particular SGA and UGA. We will discuss this two in unit number five. So these two areas uh, will be maintained and coordinated by this particular database administrator. So let us discuss what exactly the, <coughs> these two points will be. So we will discuss in future. Okay, in unit number five. We will discuss this. So these are the roles and responsibilities of uh, administrator. They may be create users, roles, catalogs, and all those. 
and then you may be create the uh, access methods of uh, uh, so called uh, uh, users uh, data and it may be organize, uh, may be organize so complete physical scheme of the specific uh, organization and uh, it may be give some kind of authority to other users to access the database and it may be create some kind of uh, so uh, uh, integrity constraints on catalogs or data dictionaries and uh, he will working uh, acting as a liaison between uh, one user to another user and allocation of space, reallocation of space, or elimination of user, everything will be done by this particular fellow. And uh, monitoring of performance, entire organization's performance will be monitored by him. And overall control will be taken care by so database administrator. And there are two areas, so actual storage areas in, in databases, that is SGA. Actually, this is a very, very, very uh, uh, not required for, for the students, but it is required for the for people who are working with the, the IT industry. Uh, UGA and uh, SGA both will be maintained by the uh, database administrator. So please, uh, I'll, I'll I'll send out this particular PPT to you people. Please read out everything and have to write or prepare some notes on uh, watching up for the video which I am supposed to send to you through YouTube. Then follow by right. roles and responsibilities of uh, designers. What actually these people are doing? These people will be always identify what kind of important data which is being stored on the database. So databases and users and uh, roles will be created by database administrator. So he is not responsible what kind of data which is being stored by so particular users. Uh, it, it cannot be taken care of by database administrator. It could be taken care by database designer. Okay, he will decide what kind of data which is being stored within the database. And uh, so, if any uh, legacy data will be given by so any company, any client, so that legacy data will be so structured by him. Structured in the sense, huge amount of data will be given. So this is my requirement. My data will be available something like this. So based on this one, you have to prepare databases and so that the data will be stored into database permanently in digital form. Such kind of reputation will be made by the client so that it may be, uh, it could be received by the database designer and the database designer can be performed through collaboration. Okay. And then followed by, so communicate uh, with all people, all people or all users who are the, uh, taking care about the requirements of uh, 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 requirements of uh, so-called so-called uh, so, uh, organization, and they will take care about everything. And uh, that particular operation will be done by the database uh, designer. Okay. So these are the responsibilities of a designer. So based on whatever he was decided, the design uh, designer was decided based on the decisions which have been taken by the designer so appropriately system analysts or uh, database application programmers will be act okay so therefore uh, whatever the decisions will be taken by database designer they will be implemented by system analyst and uh, database uh, so uh, application programmers okay then the client server architecture how the database will be already we have seen three schema architecture have been taken care then how this could be implemented three schema architecture will be implemented look at this so uh, initial days in initial days so database was implemented by using file server architecture it is not actually client server it is file server architecture so data will be stored in the form of files not in the form of tables or row column kind of tables it could be stored in, uh, in the form of uh, so files only here. So whatever the requirement which may be done by or which may be forwarded by any uh, user, they may be they may be retrieved from the database in the form of file, not in the form of table. That's what you need to understand. However, so there must be a particular server. So this is actual database and the secondary level server this server is responsible to communicate with the database on taking the requisitions from different different users and uh, these two will be connected to so, internet a 
course, LAN or WAN internet. And through internet, many other people, user one, user two, user three, user four, and so on and so forth. Many number of users are supposed to be connected here. All these uh, people will be forward one request, uh, one request for data. So that request will be taken care of a file server and it could be evaluated that request based on the requisition of one particular user, which kind of data is required is evaluated by a file server and will communicate with the database. So entire data will be grabbed by the file server in the form of file and the file will be forwarded to the specific user. Okay. So it could be done by uh, file server architecture. So actually I require only one line of uh, data, but it, 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 could, it could be gives you complete file. For example, I'm, I'm supposed to uh, require what are the details of uh, so 19505. I'd like to take only 505 data. So when you have to ask 505 data, 19505 data, it must be gives you complete secondary information. Thereby, so your local workstation, your local database workstation will be run some more query to get the proper information. Okay. 555. He was joined just before. So probably attendance could not be there. So, okay, so in the form of a file, entire data will be so uh, uh, collected from the database and it will be sent to the user. So, required only two, uh, two kilobytes of data is required by the user, but uh, the file server will be sent approximately one GB of data. So, it is uh, meaningless. So, initially it was uh, implemented in this form. Okay, so what are the problems of this one here? File server computer is connected to network. Uh, uh, of course, this is not uh, that much uh, important for us. Uh, the, the, the diagram itself indicates that whatever the operation we have uh, performed here, so uh, distributed uh, network, so it's not, it is not uh, also that much important for us. Uh, 556 and 564, these two also just entered after 24 minutes. Okay, however, what are the file server architectures? Uh, basic. Uh, uh, a basic uh, problem here. Look at this. So there is a query which could be written by the particular user. So select a name string from uh, uh, two tables are there, uh, two files are, that is uh, customer and order, where the so and so, so and so class is being uh, done and he may be required only one particular person's information. But here, what exactly the file server will be done, here is, one moment please. So what exactly the file server uh, will be done here in the sense, it will be gives you complete information of this particular customer and this particular order. Thereby your workstation should run so one more query to get uh, so max fresh. Okay, max, max fresh information will be taken by uh, your actual workstation but not at the file server. So that is the disadvantage. Okay, so because of this one, uh, user wants only uh, two, two kilobytes of data, for example, two kilobytes of data. So to store this particular information, which may be required two kilobytes. So two kilobytes of uh, uh, data is uh, required by the user, required by the user. But uh, file server has sent, so one GB of information to the user. So uh, it is not supposed to uh, apply whatever the operation could be done here. So that is the basic problem which could be taken care by by so this one. So that is why because uh, requisition is 2 KB, but your you file server is uh, pumping 1 GB. So that is why heavy network traffic will be available. Then second one is uh, total cost will be very, very, very high. Total cost in the sense not in terms of rupees. While transferring uh, 2 kilobytes of data, how much uh, uh, network, I mean, uh, internet speed is required and the transferring 1 GB of data, how much uh, uh, internet speed is being required. So that in, in, in terms of uh, transferring the data, so what is the network equip equipment you may be required and what is the so amount of space which is being wasted. So that is, uh, uh, that is uh, uh, the information regarding to high total cost of uh, ownership. That is the meaning. And then, uh, so here, uh, whatever the operation, which could be done, so which could be required, which could be actually required by the user, 
that could be done at the plant side only, first station side only. Okay. So these are the disadvantages. Heavy traffic will be there because of uh, actual requisition is very small enough and uh, file server has been uh, so pumped huge amount of data. So that is the basic problem. To avoid such kind of problems, so client server architecture was introduced. How the client server architecture will be? Look at this. Look at this. This is the client server architecture. And here, actual database will be available here and the database server will be available here there is a requisition which could be sent via internet to this particular server by one particular user and he wants only two kilobytes of data yes two kilobytes of data will be selected and that data will be sent back to the so user so requisition is two kilobytes and the two kilobytes of data and uh, extracted data also 2 kilobytes, not exactly 1 GB, 2 kilobytes. And the sent data also, so 2 kilobytes. Look at this, so how simple it is. So this is a requested kind of thing. This is a extracted kind of thing. So this is a sent kind of thing. Look at this, so whatever the actual data which is required, that could be sent to the particular user. That's all. User cannot be performed one more operation after getting the data. So this is the basic idea because basic idea behind client server architecture of database management system. Okay. So here uh, uh, this particular thing will be seen client will be at the first tier and the server will be at the second tier. They will be run in a different different uh, uh, machines and, and at a different different geographical areas also. Normally, if we take the example of a Gmail, Gmail server, so Gmail server will be uh, available uh, geographically somewhere else, but you are supposed to access the mail, mail, so by taking one particular web browser. So simply you may be access the mail, so by taking one particular web browser. So that is why geographically somewhere else, and you may be access using Ethernet. Okay, so that is the basic advantage. So uh, uh, the separation between uh, the database server and the client will be clear, very much clear. Okay, and then uh, so thin clients versus thick client. Thin client in the sense the client is always working. The client is always working based on the database server. Thick client in the sense after getting getting some kind of data from the file server. So now you have to work uh, work out something here at your client, and you have to get the answer. So that is the difference between uh, so uh, thin client and thick client. So less or more application logic on the client side. If less uh, application logic will be there, then that is called as a thin client, and uh, more application logic will be available with the with, with the client, then that is called as a thick client. For example, you can see so ATM machines. For example, ATM machines. If uh, 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 all bank servers are shut down, then ATM machine cannot be worked out anymore. It could not be take uh, any extra operation. So that is why that is called as a thin client. So if uh, server will be get shut down, so you could not perform any further operation. So that uh, such kind of uh, uh, such kind of uh, uh, sub, sub, uh, clients are called as thin clients. Whereas thick clients, in the sense, the systems what we have to use. If Gmail, I wanted to communicate with Gmail, but Gmail server is gets off. Even so, uh, 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 without the Gmail, you can work out with your system. But whereas uh, ATM machine cannot be worked out further operations if uh, server will be get shut down. Okay, so that is the difference between the thin client and the thick client. And furthermore, so at the client side server, uh, the parts are presentation of uh, actual data. Whatever the data you have uh, you have uh, uh, requested and whatever the data it has been sent to you, that could be provided, that could be printed on uh, so-called uh, so, uh, uh, primary output device that are, such as uh, the monitor. So that is the first operation. Second operation is, uh, so business and data processing logic, uh, very few operations of uh, business and the data processing logic will be gets operated at uh, client side. 
and then uh, send the database requisitions to the server so that we will get the results in a particular particular way. Particular way in the sense how much amount of data you required, so that amount of data will be received. Not exactly more, not exactly less. That is what uh, the point which we have to, to consider here, okay, at this place. And then at the server, the second third, what actually being done here in the sense, so if concurrent operations in unit number six, sorry, unit number five, we'll discuss about this one. What is the, the concurrency and what is the data services? Everything will be discussed in unit number five. That is a transaction and the concurrent, uh, concurrent uh, uh, operations will be discussed in unit number five. So concurrent operations, how the concurrent operations will be done? And then uh, followed by, so what are the different different kinds of uh, operations which could be done on the database server will also be discussed. Okay, will also be executed. And the business logic, business logic in the sense of validation of data while taking the data into database, whether the constraints will be gets followed strictly or not, will be taken care by the server. And then uh, uh, there are many uh, different different kinds of database. Uh, 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 servers that is a single client and single server that is the people who are using uh, database within one, one system something like uh, uh, probably by day after tomorrow's class we'll start our SQL so in a, a SQL uh, my system will be considered as uh, both server and client so that is called a single client and single server multiple clients are single servers and multiple clients are multiple servers so there are many other uh, kind of things and inter-process communication could also be done in a proper way through network, Why a network it could be done. Okay. These operations are going to happen in terms of uh, database client server architecture. Okay. And advantages will be, so performance will be increased. So how much amount of data will be uh, required by you, only that data will be done. So. Uh, second one is uh, reduction, reduce the communication costs. Okay, already I told you just before I have to, I have uh, given one information that uh, if two kilobytes is required, file server will be sent uh, one GB. So communication costs will be very high over there. Here communication costs will be required. So only selected data will be just transferred here, not more than that uh, uh, data. And then reduce the hardware costs because uh, so at the client side we are not supposed to so we are not supposed to uh, take care taking care about uh, uh, specific things here and then uh, and then increase consistency and security because uh, both will be maintained at the two different places so that uh, it could be done here and then uh, the advantage will be so scalability. Huge number of people are not supposed to be sharing the data. So that is why multiple servers and multiple kinds kind of uh, architecture must be followed by this one here. Okay. Then uh, tip clients are uh, supposed to be considered while the uh, while, uh, so processes uh, being done by the uh, database uh, operations here. So that is what uh, it could be required. So this is part about today's class and uh, we will discuss remaining to unit number two by tomorrow onwards. So by tomorrow onwards, today only, only 45 students have uh, attended. So please the CR, please inform to everyone to attend the uh, classes by tomorrow onwards because I'm going to take uh, the uh, uh, practical classes by tomorrow onwards. So that is why you people, you people must take care while uh, uh, while attending the classes by tomorrow. Onwards.